very soon after quantum mechanics developed, people started to worry very much. And there were endless discussions between Bohr and Heisenberg and, and Einstein. What does the theory mean? And all these discussions were always the issues whether the theory is consistent or not. But when people try to understand more deeply what it means, they gave up. I, Simon, for example, say, don't ever try to understand what quantum mechanics means, because you will fall into abyss and you will never get out of it. Now, I, I from the beginning, because I was led to think about physics because I was interested in foundation questions, I couldn't believe that there is no way to understand it better. So all my life was developed just to try to understand it better. Classical physics is a theory that shows that Interactions in physics are always local, meaning that if you have a particle that feels any force, then due to that, it changes its velocity according to the laws of Newton. That happens only if the force acts at the same location where the particle is. So that's called locality. It turns out that in quantum mechanics, that is not true. And there was a discovery made by me and my physics advisor, Professor Bohm, that shows that in quantum mechanics, there is a possibility that the force will act in one region of space, the particles move outside of this region, and nevertheless, it is affected by it. And that is a very important new property of quantum mechanics that shows that in the world, the interactions, all the interactions in the world have this kind of non-locality, all, all, all of this. You have a, a, something is called a solenoid. The solenoid is, is a kind of a current, a loop of current that inside it there is a magnetic field confined to that, to that solenoid. Outside there is nothing there. Now you take a charged particle and you send it around the solenoid. If it were a classical particle, it must go either one side or the other side. A quantum particle can do the trick of splitting itself into two halves and one half of it moves here the other half moved there, like a wave. And then when the two of them meet together, there is something called interference, like interference of waves. And that interference has a maxima and minima, place where the, the two waves combine constructively and place where they combine destructively, like two waves in water. So the places where the maxima and minima occur depend on how much flux was in the solenoid. So the solenoid affects non locally the particle but in a way, this could happen only quantum mechanically. At first, it was a great disbelief. And I remember that people told, told me that Niels Bohr was sure that it cannot be right because it's against the classical correspondence. But then, luckily, there were two physicists at um, Harvard, Perry and Ramsey. Ramsey, by the way, got the Nobel Prize for another reason. And they published an article where they showed that the effect that we predicted must be there for consistency of quantum mechanics. Otherwise, it would lead to a violation of the uncertainty principle. When people saw this article, they became convinced that we must be right. And on this parallel to that, there was experimental evidence already collecting from the first experiment that was done by Chambers at Bristol University uh, that, be, that showed that we are right. But at first, people could not believe that something like empty space could affect the particle. The party is moving completely in empty space because the, the field is far away. There is nothing there. It looks like vacuum. And here the party is affected non-locally by something that is complicated. And the reason why it's possible in quantum mechanics is only due to the fact that there are uncertainties. If there were no uncertainties, then we would immediately violate causality. Causality says that if you do something at one point, it cannot affect the other uh, thing immediately. There must be time before it goes and affects something else. So imagine that we have a non-local interaction. Then I do something here, the particle is there, and suddenly it feels very quickly an effect. So we have shown that the only way that quantum mechanics allows it to happen is because this thing that is affected in the particle is completely uncertain. And because it's completely uncertain, there is no way to see that, that uh, change, or no way to signal. Yeah, it's not local, but causality is preserved. We discover now by looking at this new way in quantum mechanics, a host 
of new phenomena that has to do with non-locality in space, non-locality in time. A lot of these are very non-intuitive strategy, but once you learn to think correctly about the non-locality of quantum mechanics, it can become intuitive for you too. So that's my message.